Dylan! You son of a... <laughs> they did it. They actually did what I thought would never happen. Riot has done the impossible and poured it over Invoker. And he's amazing. 10 abilities, incentivized comboing, red, blue, purple themed reagents. It's just so beautiful. Invoker has for a long time been one of my favorite heroes in all of Dota. And to see why I'm so thrilled about the Huey port, let's look at a comparison of the two Arsenal mages. An Arsenal Mage is a hero with more spells than anyone else, able to throw spells around like a level 100 RPG wizard. They are complex to play and reward mastery and creativity in how the spells are combined together. My favorite Arsenal Mage is Aang the Avatar, but others include Magicka and Azuric. In popular MOBA, Invoker stood alone, and I'm oh so glad to see Huey join this exclusive club. To give you an answer of how Huey made his way into League, I want to spend time discussing the innovative mechanic that made Wei possible. You see, Wei has a very elegant method of accessing his spells. By moving one of the spells from his combo set into his ultimate slot, he can access his spells with just two button presses, and only using two reagents per spell. Click Q, W, or E for the first reagent, and your hotbar swaps over to the specific spells accessed by selecting the second reagent. Press Q, then E, and boom, you got yourself Meteor. I mean, Molten Fisher. Already primed and ready for your mouse click. To do the same on Invoker without recycling elements from previous cast, you'd need to press E, E, W, R, D to be primed with the same spell. What Riot has done for the priming of new abilities on Huey is truly fantastic, and I commend them for this approach. Huey loses the ability to prime multiple spells from the same base reagent, but he is way more intuitive to use. Before going over the specific abilities of each arsenal mage, we have to talk about a key difference between League Champions and Dota Heroes, a difference I've mentioned time and time again throughout my comparison series. League is about mobility and skill shots, while Dota is about committal and crowd control. This fundamental concept is at the core of so many differences between alike heroes in both games resulting in a lot of champions missing reliable CC in League while their Dota counterparts have it. When it comes to Hui's adaptation of Invoker's skill set, a lot had to be changed to fit this new design fundamental. Invoker is widely regarded as a control mage in Dota. Sure, he has a lot of damage, but most of his abilities apply different forms of CC. Anything from slows, stuns, disarms, to things like armor shred and mana burn. Many of Invoker's CC abilities were reworked or diminished when Hui picked up the skill set, which resulted in a kit with less CC, but Hui Hui more damage. <laughs> so what was reworked? What remained? Let's take a look. A very interesting similarity between both Hui and Invoker are how their spells are color-coded. Disaster for Hui and Exhort for Invoker are both the red reagents and scale up the damage spells. Serenity and Quas are both blue and focus on defensive utility, and Despair and Wex are your disruption. These don't fit perfectly, but they're decent enough generalizations, and I'll show you why. Starting with the red spells, Hui and Invoker share quite a few similarities. As mentioned before, Molten Fisher is basically Meteor. You have a linear red skill shot with impact damage and damage over time. Just disregard the cast range differences. This will be a reoccurring theme in this comparison. Dota's cast ranges are just way bigger than League's. Molten Fisher is also the only instance in which League adds CC where Dota's Invoker didn't have one, slowing enemies within the AoE. As you'll see later, this slow is also adapted from Invoker. Next up, Severing Bolt vs Sunstrike. Here you have an extremely long range circular nuke that deals more damage to isolated targets and has a cast away. Invoker can eventually upgrade this with an item to trigger 20 copies at once, but that's just more of Dota doing Dota things. The final red spell is where we see our first drastic alteration. Invoker can summon up to two pets with ranged attacks that shred armor. 
League doesn't have many champions with summons, and those that do have summons have it as a primary mechanic of the champion. It's also really hard to control multiple units in League, so Hui just replaces this with a generic skill shot that does AoE damage. The disruption spells of purple and pink have some similarities, but what CC Invoker has in abundance has been dramatically toned down. For starters, EMP is entirely missing from Hui, as League has no form of mana burn in the entire roster. The mana sustain EMP provides Invoker has been moved to another ability for Hui. Instead, Hui takes inspiration from Deafening Blast, where Invoker pushes all enemies in an AoE and disarms. Hui's Grim Visage pushes just one enemy away, but with fear. Also missing from Hui's kit is Invoker's Alacrity. And let's be honest, an attack buff is kind of boring compared to everything else Invoker can do. Instead, Invoker's third control spell and his most powerful CC by far has been split up into two parts. Tornado, one of the best disengage and setup tools in all of Dota, is just way too powerful to be ported to League without heavy nerfs. Well, just take a look at Janna. Invoker's Tornado has AoE stun, long duration, and a hell of a lot of range when maxed out. So it's been segmented. The AoE close range stun component is adapted into Crushing Maw, while the long range CC has become Gaze of the Abyss. And so we come to the blue spells, where our two arsenal mages differ most greatly. What Invoker can do with his Ice Element just won't fly in a port to league, so things were shuffled around and reimagined. For one, Invoker has an annoying point and click stun, and that's just gone now. Invoker can also create a slowing zone on the ground, turn invisible, and slow enemies while invisible. The invisibility was replaced with AoE shields, which is still defensive. The AoE slowing around yourself was replaced with an AoE speed boost on the ground, so rather than slowing enemies, you get to speed up allies. As for the line that slows enemies to touch it, well, that was the slow moved over to Molten Fissure, the first spell that we talked about. For Hui's final basic ability, it's a bit of a damage buff and plentiful mana restore. This is where Hui gets his mana refund from, since EMP was shredded. You can also think of this bonus damage as a leftover from Alacrity. With EMP gone, Hui needed another cool looking circular damage and CC ability to replace it. Riot has given him a dedicated ultimate for the job in the form of Spiraling Despair, granting AoE damage and slow. <sighs> That's it for the active abilities of both heroes. What, I forgot to talk about all the passives? Okay, fine, fine. Let's do Invoker first. His reagents are actually permanent buffs that affect spells cast under the reagent buff. Exhort gives spell damage, Wex lowers cooldowns, and Quas gives Omnivet. This can be really daunting to min-max, as if you want to cast Meteor to heal with, you would need to press E, E, W, R, Q, 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 D, and then click the ground. Playing Invoker for an hour is so exhausting sometimes. You have to track spell combos with spell recipes and all the passives, it's just enough to make your head spin. Alright, combos. That's where Hui's passive comes in. It rewards you for landing consecutive spells, and teaches you to prioritize combos when able. Invoker doesn't have this, but any capable player will tell you that each of his abilities can feel like parts of a whole. When you combo abilities for Invoker, even small connections can feel like incredible buffs. Take Deafening Blast and Meteor for example. The newbiest of combos out there sets up enemies with a push so they are forced to stay in the Meteor path for longer. Or Tornado into Sunstrike for long range execute. I feel that Hui will develop the same types of combos, just using Grim Visage into Molten Fissure, or Gaze into Severing Bolt. A champion passive that makes these stronger, I don't know, it feels redundant, you know? 
Gameplay for both Arsenal mages looks to be very similar. Stay in the backline, throw initial combo salvo of 3-4 to four spells, then wait on cooldowns and throw spells as needed to continue the fight. Invoker has the advantage here, with his vastly more adaptable kit and access to spells from the same color in a row. Wei is still in beta testing, and I'm eager to see what the community does with him in the weeks after release. Actually, no, no, that's not right. I've been comparing the spells of these guys, even their combos to each other, but the truth is that as he's currently designed, Hui doesn't play anything like Invoker. And it's all because of one thing, cooldowns. You see, if Hui is meant to be an arsenal mage with spell combos, and you unleash your first volley, then you'll notice that each of his base reagents all have different cooldowns. And most of them are rather long. If you want to combo the spells, you just can't do it when one reagent is off cooldown, because you'll need to wait another 10 seconds for the next one to come up. This small difference between Invoker and Huei makes him feel so clunky and uncomfortable to use in fights. Huei, after the first salvo, devolves into spam Q for nuke over and over while waiting for the other reagents to come up again. I think this difference is a big hindrance for Huei in his champion fantasy of being a spell weaver. Come back to this video in 3 months. I predict that, unless something has changed, he'll devolve into just a guy with 5 or 6 abilities because the others are less efficient and not worth spending cooldowns on. But I really do hope I'm wrong. He looks so cool. Hope you enjoyed the comparison of the Arsenal Mages. And if you like this one, go check out my other comparison videos. Like and subscribe. Bye.